Welcome to our first video for topic 6, for unit 6. Um, our goal in this video is to be able to write equivalent values as both fractions, decimals, or percents. Uh, so we're going to really basically talk about what is a percent. What does that mean? You may have heard it before, you've probably seen it before, but what do we actually do with it? Evidence-wise, we're going to, well, understand what a percent is. We're going to make connections between fractions, decimals, and percents, and we're going to calculate percentages from fractions or decimals, um, though we're going to keep that fairly easy for the time being. Our learning experience is there. You can pause the video if you'd like to read it, but it's the same things as per usual. Let's talk about what a percent is. Very, very, very simply put, it's a number with this thing next to it, the percent symbol. So this would say 40%. I'm going to guess you probably knew that. Uh, so in more detail, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and write this down. A percent is a rate, coming back from unit 5, in which the first term is compared to 100. So essentially what that means is whenever we write a rate, we're going to have our number on top, whatever that might be, and on the bottom we should always have 100. What that does is it makes it into an actual percent because a percent specifically compares it to 100. We can even think about the fact that the word percent has cent in it. If you're in my class, we talked in class about how cent has something to do with 100, specifically to do with 1 100th. One so per also means of, so of 1 100th one essentially. In terms of some of the easy ways to calculate percents, uh, one way is with a decimal. Let's say that we have the decimal 0 0.73, so 73 hundredths. If we were to want to write this as a percent, we just need to multiply it by 100. That's it. When we do that, we're essentially moving our decimal point over 2. So we're going to get 73%. You can do this with more complicated decimals as well. Let's say we have something like this. We can again multiply it by 100, and we'll get 73.45%. Nothing too bad. All it's doing is essentially is telling you part of some whole amount. Sometimes you see percentages over 100, um, but usually they're going to be between 0 and 100. Pause the video if you need to write any of this down, which you do, you should have everything written down, uh, and then we'll move on to some examples. So let's look at three ways that we can find percentages. One way is to use a grid, like we see over here. Now this grid is very intentionally a 10 by 10 grid, so we can see that it is in fact 10 by 10, so there are 100 squares in this thing. If we want to find the percentage that is shaded in, we just have to count how many boxes are shaded in. Now you could sit there and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think a much faster way would just be to do some multiplication. So we see that we have 7 here, which I kind of failed at dotting, but 10 times 7 would be 70. So we can say that we have 70% shaded in. If we want to do the part that's not shaded in, we do the same thing and we get 30% not shaded. One interesting thing to note is 70 plus 30 would equal 100. 100% 100 for most things is the maximum that you can get to. You shouldn't be able to go above 100% for now. 
at least. Copy that down if you need to, and then let's look at our next method. The next method is using a number line. So if we look at this number line, we have 0 to 10, and we have 70. We can make an equivalent number line. It's the exact same length. Our zeros line up. But this time, instead of 10, we're going to use 100. That means if we keep everything equivalent, if this was 1, this is now 10. If this was 3, this is now 30. And the example that they have, 7, is now 70. Basically, we just multiplied this by 10. So if we said 7 out of 10, we could say that that's actually 70%. Again, you might be able to guess what the last one's going to be. And in fact, to be fair, it shows us here. Uh, you can use an equivalent fraction to find the percent. For example, if we start off with a fraction 7 tenths, we can think, what do we need to do to 10 to make it into 100? Well, if we multiply it by 10, we can do that. You'll notice that we also do the same thing to the top. That way we keep things perfectly balanced, as all things should be. So we do 7 times 10 as well. 70 out of 100. 70 out of 100 is, again, 70%. This works with anything that you can do to multiply to 100. For example, if we had, I don't know, let's say 34 out of 50. What do we need to do to 50 to get 100? We need to multiply it by 2, which means we're also going to multiply the top number by 2. So we'd get 68 out of 100, which would be, for this problem, 68%. Nothing too bad, I hope. Pause the video, rewind it if you need to. Uh, make sure that you understand these three methods. Which one you use is totally up to you. I think there's one of them that you'd be using in real life more often than the other ones. Are you due for today uh, is a little bit different because you have a choice. Wow. You got three problems up here. You can choose whichever one you want to do. Uh, the first one there, find the percentage of red squares based on that grid. Uh, second one, use the fraction to find a percent. Think about what do you need to do to 25 to make it 100. Um, and the third one uses a number line if 6 inches is 100%. What percentage of the line segment does point C show? So what do you think? Um, that was a little bit different than the number line one we did, but it's close enough. Pause the video. Pick which one you want to do. If you want to do more than one, feel free. I'm never going to say not to do so because, as we all know, more practice is more good. Things to remember from this video. First off is our definition. A percent is a rate in which the first term is compared to 100. That is the key idea from here, um, from this video. Write that down again if you didn't write it down earlier because you absolutely need to have that written down. When you're writing a percent, you're going to use the first term in the rate and then essentially add a percent to the end. So this is specifically referring to if you already have um, if you already have something in a fraction out of a hundred, then you just need to use that term, so you'd have 35%. That's what that means in case that's not clear. Finally, you can use a grid, a number line, or a fraction to write a percent. Um, you can also use decimals, as we saw from the just what is a percent part. Um, out of those three, I'd be curious to see if you can comment in the comments. Comment which one you think is most common. Do we use grids, number lines, or fractions most often when using percentages? Pause the video if you need to do that, or if you need to write any of these down. Finally, we come to our suggested practice problems for today. In numbers 6 and 7, you're going to write a percent of each figure that is shaded. We've got two of them there. And then for 8 through 10, you're going to find the percentage. I'll give you a hint on this in case it's a little bit confusing. Uh, the bottom number here should always be 100. That way you can actually write it as a percent. But what do you need to do in order to find that? That's going to be the trick. So give that a think, pause the video, and of course, good luck.